Hello everyone, welcome back to Eva Green Month. Today we'll be covering a Franklin. Now Franklin is a very interesting film. It's a very artsy, very philosophical film that asks a lot of interesting questions. Should we believe everything we see? Or some things is an illusion to help us cope. Now I ended up really enjoying this movie for a multitude of reasons because I enjoy films like this that are intelligent, pose a lot of interesting questions, and go by the theory of show don't tell. This movie shows a lot and leaves a lot up to the mind, but it doesn't tell us a lot of things. A lot of it is what we can decipher and that's what I love about this film. This film is very interesting and like I said it's a very artsy film. Because of this however it's not a film for everyone, which is kind of unfortunate. I feel like this is a film everyone should everyone could enjoy, but if you're not the type to overthink or critically look at films, this is not the film for you. Now let's get into the discussion of parts that I liked about the film. Now I think the film has a very strong introduction where he introduced two priests and he starts off with by saying that he needs to kill a man. Now this is a very compelling interest intro for me because whenever someone says they're going to kill someone, I'd like to know the reason, how they're going to do it, why they deserve to be dead, what's this person like, so I was immediately engrossed in this film. And if that didn't help, the scenery that is shown in Wild Town where Priest is based, it is a lovely and gorgeous design. This movie looks absolutely stunning, taking place in modern day London, and meanwhile, meanwhile maybe the more interesting of the two appearance wise to look at with its gothic and steampunk settings, but England is still a very beautiful city and it's wonderful to look at. Both the sets are beautiful and let us fall into the world, especially when we are brought to Meanwhile Town. Absolutely stunning. I'm going to give a great quick a spoiler warning now because you can't really talk about this movie without spoiling some stuff because that is the way of the film. It's very philosophical and it needs to be discussed. Now let's look at the characters. Emilia is played by Eva Green beautifully, I have to say. This is very much one of the characters that she can play extremely well, and I love to see her in these types of roles. She's a very damaged individual. She has a very bad relationship with her mother, and she experiments in some interesting art forms. Those forms being filming herself committing suicide, but calling the call, or calling ambulances this time enough for her to survive. It's a way she creates art, and perhaps it's a way to escape for every time she commits suicide. She sees a vision of perhaps Meanwhile, and stuff of her own life. It's very interesting. I love this character that she performed for us. It's a very deep and engrossing character. It makes her segments my part, or my favorite of the whole film. They're the ones that get focused on the most, and it gives us the most development on her. But, unfortunately, she is a very damaged character. She is very sad, and, um... She's a very sad character. And these suicide attempts are a way for her to reach out to her mother for support and love and all that sad but beautifully storytelling aspects. I love her story so much, and I love how her mother and her come to come some sort of... She comes to some sort of acceptance of her mother and what she did when she took her away from her father. Very sad, but very moving all the same. Uh, I think hers is, again, the strongest of the movie. This movie enforces the theme of things are not always what we think they are or they always appear to be. Sometimes we hear worlds or people or events that changed our world. Hers was the event with her mother making it far worse when she didn't realize her mother only did it to save her. Luckily, at the end, perhaps her suicide attempts help her find this truth. But I will discuss the ending and the climax more at the very end. Priest is a very damaged character. He thinks of himself some sort of superhero, but in reality he is a war veteran. Presumably it mentions a war that he suffered from that creates the war that he went to that creates his own reality to deal with the fact that his sister has is dead. He creates his father out to be a villain that he must hunt down to finally redeem himself and feel closure. However, due to this, me, unfortunately, meanwhile, is a fictional place. Or is it? This film is not very clear on that, and it's very interesting. Perhaps it's just a parallel universe to one of ours, a place between life and death, a place that priest is stuck. And when Amelia, when she that Amelia sees when she turns on the gas. So perhaps it is real, perhaps he wasn't completely insane. His truth, of course, is being stuck and is the most visual of the representation of seeing things that aren't there. It was his escape from the world that he blamed, escape from the sad world in which his sister is dead and his father, and has a complicated relationship with his father. Interestingly enough, no, I thought this movie had a very anti-religious film or tone at the very beginning of the film, 
but the end I feel like doesn't have a religious I mean it does kind of have a religious or spiritual tone at the beginning because of the strange relationship with priests and his father he is very much against religion because his father always said it happens for a reason uh, this is God's work God will blow all that stuff so it sends priests kind of over the edge so in his fictional world religion is absolutely everything it controls everyone and priests sees this as a way for the con as for people to be controlled. And because of this, he thinks his father is the main kind of evil behind all this because his father thought or told him that his sister died for a reason. Because of this, he blames religion for that re reason and thinks he is the main villain. However, at the end, we kind of see that there is a bit of a guiding hand between all of these stories to connect them all. So perhaps this isn't so anti religious, but merely a more spiritual adventure. We'll get back to that later, however. The last two characters we have are number one, Milo, a very sad and lonely individual. He looks for love and finds it in an imaginary friend named Sally. Although he doesn't know she was an imaginary friend until, until fate would say otherwise. Eventually, due to a failed marriage, he starts to think of his old sweetheart Sally, who appears to him every so often walking away. However, it was not meant to be. When he mentions Sally to his mother, she shows him pictures where Sally doesn't seem to exist. Is she a guardian angel? Is she an imaginary friend? Although the movie highly suggests that she's an imaginary friend, you could say that she may be an angel trying to guide him to his true love in Amelia, or perhaps something more. Milo is just a sad individual, and it's unfortunate we don't get much time with him to expand his character, but we get enough that we can feel some sort of emotion behind it. I wish I had more scenes with him, but it is what it is. Milo is interesting but not a main aspect of the film. The two, of course, are Priest and Emilia's stories. Finally, a Priest's father who's on a search for him after he escaped the institution that was to look after him. This, of course, in Priest's world was a very dramatic and big evil kind of escape, but in reality he just escaped and injured and killed one of the doctors. Of course, since he thought this was a, he was in an imaginary world, can we really fault him? Well, the cops would seem to think so, so... Yes, unfortunately, or ununfortunately, we'll, we know how he ends, how it ends at least. His father's search for him is very admirable, and the ending with him is just so sad, and it's such a great character moment. Perhaps he was wrong to instill such strong religious teachings into his son, but in the end, perhaps that's what, really, what saves him is his own faith, that he, giving up his life, would be the, for the greater good. He doesn't, of course but he is willing to do it to give his son the closure that his, he feels he needs. It's a beautiful moment and the character is fairly interesting. Though it's not a very interesting subplot, I have to say, the movie on a whole is much better, or the other two plots are much better. It definitely is important to explain a lot what's going on and help us slowly realize that Priest isn't truly in our world as fully as he would like to believe. Now back to the environments that I think they are absolutely fantastic. It has a very gothic and steampunk feel as I said before and it's very beautiful to look at. These are easily pictures and paintings I would have around my house. It's absolutely stunning to look at. I love it so much. It poses a lot of questions. In fact, I wrote a lot of these questions down because I wasn't sure that they would get explained in the movie. They did of course, but if they didn't, I would have asked you. Such as, was there abuse in the family? Not really. It doesn't seem to be any physical abuse. It's emotional and not a great... Um, not great relationships. I wrote, are the parents evil? No, they aren't. They just had their own reasons for their own ways of coping and how to deal with the negative situations, such as Emilia's mother ran away from a dangerous relationship with her husband or an unsuccessful one to start a new life. Of course, Emilia takes this very poorly, but uh, perhaps it is what it is. Though you could say that it put a strain on her and Emilia's relationship, it probably was in the end for the best. Although Emilia doesn't realize this until she finally confronts her mother. A beautiful moment and a moment where she finally reaches her clarity. This movie also gives a lot of great quotes. I wrote some of them down because I like them so much I can't read them now, but they are there. I think this movie is very, very well written. And uh, one of the quotes is for a suicide attempt that I read here that the uh, guardian angel or supernatural guiding force gives to Amelia is suicide isn't about the people that we will affect it's about the people we have yet to meet and I thought that's a great quote especially when it foreshadows her meeting with Milo perhaps he's the one pushing them both I'd like to think so it seems to be that there's a strong suggestion that he is a guiding force or a guardian angel of Milo and Amelia or at least the guiding force to get them together they're both very damaged and sad individuals they hopefully will 
compliment each other. Although it seems to do so at the end, but we don't get any full closure because we I don't really see why we need to continue the story, but we can all hope. Hope that we they will be successful. And I think it's very interesting that the film had such an anti-religious tone in the beginning, yet they put an a, a guiding angel or spiritual being as a guiding force. I think it was very smart and very interesting. And I wasn't sure it was I was kind of left on my seat as to what was he? Is there some of the truly guiding us all to true love? Hopefully. Keep an eye out for janitors. They always seem to have knowledge that we do not know of yet. They always seem to be some sort of entity. If you've, have you noticed that? I have. Be nice to your janitors. They may help you one day. On a whole, I think this movie is extremely well acted, but a lot of the material does not allow for a lot of growth. Unfortunately, the priest's father and Milo don't get nearly as much attention as they needed, but perhaps that's for the best. But to be fair, I don't know how much they could have expended on Milo. He's just someone looking for love, and that's about it. He just found it an imaginary friend, and that's the clarity he found. Loneliness created Sally, but hopefully Amelia can feel that loneliness as they look the same. Perhaps that's why he made the, the guiding force made him, her, look like Amelia, huh? Uh huh. I'm really passionate about this idea. This movie asks us that we should look beyond what we think at the base level. We should ask people and we should explore. For Amelia, that was finding out the truth behind her mother. For a priest, of course, that was realizing his father was willing to give up his life and that it truly wasn't the great evil that he had made him out to be. We should always question our situation in life to learn more about ourselves and the people around us. Perhaps we were wrong all along about that one friend that scorned us. Perhaps there's a reason. Perhaps there's a reason. The climax of the movie I extremely loved because it was just so beautifully done with Priest breaking into Amelia's house and him attempting to kill his father, Amelia attempting to, not attempting, warning, threatening to kill them both if she, he doesn't leave her apartment right away as she was physically hit when he opened the door very aggressively. Uh, we find Milo discovers that she is imaginary, is truly an imaginary friend and he learns to move on and accept the fact that she was as such and he's able to find Amelia, although he has to get shot for it to happen. Uh, we Priest finally learns that his father isn't the greatest of all evils, as his father was willing to sacrifice his life. It's so beautifully done and so sad that he's willing to give it all up to prove to his son and to give closure to his son. It shows that maybe fathers don't make the best of decisions, but in the end, most of them truly do care about their children. And the fact that Milo and Amelia can finally meet each other and perhaps truly make each other happy. Is this a beautiful climax and end of the film? It all came together and perhaps it was the guiding force or perhaps it was their own destinies intertwining. Either way, this is a very interesting film and I enjoyed it thoroughly. The soundtrack especially was very good, although some pieces I don't recall now. I think it's a great piece. It's best when listened to with the movie. Excellent to set it up and give it the right mood. I think this is a movie that's great to rewatch to see how Sally is imaginary and he's talking to someone imaginary and how people react around him because people do before we find out that she's imaginary like the one teacher sees him talking to himself and he's like is there a problem here and the guy's like <laughs> Milo's like nah not at all but of course if she's imaginary that'd be very interesting to see the sea again in a different light and especially the slow progression that finding out my finding out that priest isn't totally sane and that a lot of the actions he does are to real people in the real world. Very sad, but very, very interesting. I would love to watch this movie again sometime soon. On the note though, this movie is actually is extremely sad. Very sad to see how damaged all these characters are. A lot of them just needed another helping hand and some of them just needed to know the truth of the situation. It just goes to show that we shouldn't always believe things at face value. Maybe we should ask the questions that are hard to ask. This is a movie. <laughs> And that just goes to show how intelligent this movie is. It was a great film and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Is it an Eva Green film? For sure. She's in the majority of the scenes and she gives a stellar performance. If you enjoyed this discussion of Franklin, I hope you guys will check it out and continue it down below. Have you ever had an experience like this? Down below. I have a question for you guys that I hope you will find interesting. Have you guys ever thought something was the truth but only find out that it was you were wrong all along as Amelia? Or priest it. I'll be interested to see what stories. I'll be interested to see what stories you guys have. None really spring to mind at the moment, but uh, I'm still young. I still have lots of time to learn these hard lessons later on. So I'll be very interested to see what you guys have to say, and I hope you enjoyed my discussion. If you did, I hope you'll continue to watch Eva Green Month, and uh, I'll see you back here for Cracks, as we all know. Hopefully, if you see my other reviews. Crack is my favorite Eva Green film, so I hope you come back for that discussion. For all for now, and have a wonderful day. Coming.
Now this is supposed to original filming because I thought of this once I was reviewing the footage. That uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think because I was when I this the one you just watched was the second uh, recording of this video, so it kind of went a lot faster. But in the first time I recorded it because I accidentally lost the clip. Um, I posed the question, do you think Amelia and Priest were brother and sister? Because it's, hint it's told very early on that uh, she was removed at a very early age and he he's missing his sister. So do you think they are brother and sister? I'd be curious to see what you guys think. I think the only proof I really have is, um, I think there was a line that everything happens for a reason. Or something to that effect where it connected them, at least her, what are what Priest's father said and what her mother said together. But I'll have to re-watch I'll have to re -watch it and listen for the voice at the beginning because he calls a woman. And I'm not sure if it's her or not. It could be... It could be her at the very beginning of the film. Or him... He calling her... Or him calling her at the very beginning of the film. But I'm going to have to rewatch it to find out, I guess. Uh, let, me know, let me know what you guys think. Do you think they are brother and sister? Do you think I'm pulling at straws? Uh... Yeah, actually, oh wait, I also forgot to mention his suicide. Oops. Another very beautiful piece is uh, Amelia eventually at the end sees, sees this other world, or meanwhile town, uh, before he kills himself. Um, Emily, Amelia is able to see it. She's able to see what he looks like in this world and the candles and all that. So do you think... That could be another connection for them to be brother and sister. Do you think this is actually a parallel universe? One on the edge of purgatory and the afterlife. I'll be curious to see what you guys have to say about that as well. Also, sad ending. Sad, sad ending. That's all I have to say, guys. I hope you have a good day, and I hope you can forgive the postscript because I forgot to mention this beforehand. Farewell for now.